Okay, I hope you can see that. Excellent. Thank you all for taking the time uh, to join the community call. It's been so long since I saw some uh, familiar faces and I'm hoping that the faces are not going to remain trapped in on the screen in tiny little squares for much longer. Um, there's some exciting um, events happening, uh, at least planned for next year. And I'm hoping that we're able to, you know, follow through on those things. Um, that's actually one of the things that's, um, uh, that I'd like to talk about um, when introducing the Edible Makerspace. Um, it's a tiny little corner that uh, we've carved out for ourselves in Singapore, uh, where I'm based. And uh, it sort of combines the idea of making and DIY um, to try and bring together science and food and arts and basically conversation uh, in an interesting kind of way. Um, the way I like to, I mean, my background is in um, computing. I mean, I'm, I'm a geek, uh, so I don't do that well with people, um, but um, things I really like and things have sort of become the uh, focus for uh, starting off conversation. Um, so the thing that you're seeing on the screen is a little piece of paper. It's rice paper that's been lasered out um, to spell edible makerspace which is kind of a little dream that started off this little, this idea. So I'd like to share with you a couple of photos and a couple of things that we've been working on. Um, I promise it will be just the right amount of boring. Um, with the, so just bear with me. Um, the um, origin of, of our little experiment, a food experiment was with fermentation as with a lot of things that happened that uh, turned into interesting things. Um, it was called the Fermentation Gut Hub Meetup, which was a series of informal gatherings that happened at the Hackerspace in Singapore. And the Hackerspace in Singapore is a community space. It's not particularly in interesting or exciting, but it's um, a common ground for a lot of uh, uh, people from various backgrounds to gather and talk about things and bring their sort of mindset to a new idea. Um, and the Gut Hub, which is a play on GitHub, uh, was an idea to, you know, put microbes front and center um, and not just talk about them, but also see how they grow and see how they taste. Um, and so the little gut hub was a tiny little space in a tiny little fridge uh, in a tiny little hacker space, um, which led to a whole bunch of conversations and a whole bunch of interactions uh, around not just uh, fermentation, but also the DIY lab equipment that goes into um, fermenting these things, the sort of um, uh, indigenous, if you will, recipes that have been passed down from grandmothers uh, and the stories that go with it, and also how um, it's part of our diet, it's part of our culture, it's part of um, tradition in so many different ways. And the science behind it is not something we delve into usually, uh, but that also brought a lot of um, um, different people into the conversation by focusing on, uh, you know, the enzymes and the the the, the science behind uh, fermentation. So um, we tend to uh, gather around these sorts of things and let the conversation flow. And in my <clears throat> personal interest, tends towards you know the electronics and the uh, the bits and bytes of it. But I've learned a lot about um, uh, the science of fermentation through these sorts of conversations. Um, and that's kind of what um, led to uh, a, a bunch of different projects. Um, with Singapore being a tiny little island, uh, we call ourselves a little red dot for a reason. Um, so we use that idea to map out a couple of things that were of interest uh, to people in uh, these sorts of conversations. And one of them was, um, food sharing and food security. Uh, so we had a little project at the Hackerspace um, where we crowdsourced, or in this case, crowdsourced, like sauerkraut crowdsourced, a map of places where uh, people were offering starters and food uh, for uh, anybody to share and not just you know cultures, but also uh, just food for uh, if you have um, people who make food, uh, and they happen to have excess and they wanted to share it with their neighbors and so on uh, because the density in Singapore is quite high 
just walking um, or taking public transport and getting picking it up would be quite easy. So we thought that mapping out uh, that exercise would be quite nice. Um, so it had you know varying levels of success, and it does exist. Documentation always remains a challenge, as I'm sure a lot of people will agree. Um, but these are the little projects that have been bubbling up, and um, we've tried to I've tried to collect them and participate in them uh, and keep the conversation going as much as possible. Um, so these uh, little projects then uh, led us to a fork um, from the fermentation gut hub in both senses of the word fork. Um, and it started with a little idea of, of, a, of using a stock image of somebody's very broken down kitchen, uh, which finally, after many months of work, led to an actual kitchen, which looks not very different from the stock image, but um, you know, it, it's slightly better. And this is the space that we call the edible maker space. Um, and yes, it is cat approved. We have a little neighborhood cat that hangs out with us. So we kind of like that space. Um, we also have a logo and that's how you know we're legit. If we have a logo for a legit organization, <laughs> um, the uh, inspiration for that obviously came from Pac-Man, uh, but there was a little uh, DIY science project which completely captured my imagination. Um, which is not just Pac-Man, but it was called Pacmecium, um, as in paramecium or paramecii, I think if I'm saying this correctly, um, where a bunch of um, uh, tiny little creatures were hooked up to DIY electronics and you could control them. And you had a camera focused on uh, uh, the tiny little slide in which they live and you could play a game uh, with these living creatures which I thought was just like the perfect combination of tech and science um, uh, and, and bio. Uh, so it, it, it got a lot of conversations going, uh, at least uh, in my experience. And this is something that I'm trying to replicate on our side. We haven't quite uh, managed to do that just yet, but it remains on the to-do list. Um, uh, also, uh, somebody earlier on mentioned that they were working with DIY science uh, instruments and uh, repurposing uh, off the shelf uh, devices like USB webcams and so on um, to do sciencey type instrumentation uh, is a very good way to go. And um, I really like this idea. So we've been trying to incorporate that in uh, as much of the work that we do. Um, so we try and include as many different people uh, from various backgrounds into the space as possible. Basically, the idea is that if you want to experiment with something in your own kitchen and you're not entirely sure that it's going to upset people that you share that space with, then the edible make space is sort of like a little common kitchen where you can bring your experiments and they can happily live and grow and fail in a safe, uh, smelly, not so smelly environment. Um, Darren, who's part of the call, is also here. He's playing right now, I think, with... Uh, uh, what was this? Um, universal indicator, I think it might be um, bubble cabbage. So we play with edibles um, as much as possible because you know that's sort of common ground. And if you've ever been to Singapore, or if you've interacted with Singaporeans, food is central to our culture. Um, and if we talk about food, it's a really nice uh, way to get conversations going for whatever reason. Uh, kombucha is a really nice way to do this. Um, we do a lot of kombucha and uh, later on we'll talk about the scobies uh, that have led to a whole bunch of different experiments. We also play with um, bioplastics and uh, food waste where possible. Um, this was a little experiment of uh, cooking up your own bioplastic and uh, documenting it as a little zine and sharing it with people which again uh, was appreciated with, by people sort of coming to this for the first time, dispelling some of the myths that, you know, it, it's uh, bioplastic is something that needs to be left uh, to industry or factory production. It's something that you can cook up at home. Um, it's a lot of fun and um, it relatable because, you know, coffee, who doesn't like coffee, right? I'm addicted. Um, we also played around with uh, 3D printed, um, uh, experiments. This was, I think, um, a failed experiment involving some slime mold um, that was put into a maze inspired by the Westworld, if I'm not mistaken. 
um, and it didn't quite work out the way we wanted it to, but it was a lot of fun to try. Um, with um, uh, all of these experiments, we try and find ways to look closer at them um, with the microscope that um, Richard will know very well. So we've got our own little um, uh, open flexure microscope and here we've been calibrating and we figured out the question that I always get uh, is how many times magnification can you get? And so we decided to definitively answer this with a little calibration thing. Um, and so the 0.1 millimeter square on the calibration on the right hand side shows up as, uh, was it 50 millimeters or five centimeters on the left? Um, so it's about 500 times the magnification. Um, and that, you know, sort of dispels a lot of people's like uh, questions. And then you just focus on what you put in there rather than uh, how many times magnification. This I'm sure is familiar to a lot of people. I've been looking for tardigrades for quite a while now. Um, we have, in, in spite of the fact that we live uh, on the equator, this is a degree off um, and tardigrades are commonly found everywhere. I'm still looking for tardigrades and I still haven't quite found one yet in this natural habitat. So if anybody wants to help me out with this, uh, we'll talk later on. Um, we've been uh, uh, in our hunt for tardigrades. Uh, I got a little frustrated and Darren had a brilliant idea. Um, <laughs> so we decided to make our own tardigrade. Uh, but this being the edible makerspace, we had access to um, makerspace-y type stuff. And so we stuck a bunch of um, cheese under a laser just to see what we could get. And this is what turned out. That's a little piece of tardigrade that you can eat on a slice of cheese. And it was quite delicious. I strongly recommend if you have a laser to please put some toast underneath it. It's a lot of fun. Um, we also stick all sorts of crazy things under the microscope. Uh, anybody who is interested in like, you know, playing with the instrument or uh, curious about what grows in their compost uh, is encouraged to try these things out. Uh, so it's not just food. Um, this is Darren again, trying uh, inoculating um, uh, mushrooms so we can grow some mushrooms of our own. And that's, you know, because of a nice humid environment that we live in, they do grow really, really well. We play with food in different ways. This is the universal indicator, purple cabbage. Uh, there's uh, blue pea flower that also works the same way and it grows wild in Singapore. Uh, so we use the flowers to you know, play with food and see the color change and um, talk about color change in that sense um, with you know, uh, various pH levels, that sort of thing. Um, more recently, we were doing little workshops and showing off uh, how to play with your food in sciencey kind of ways. Um, this here is chlorophyll, which is spinach that's put in a blender. And if you shine the, it on the UV light, it turns blood red. Um, this was actually a lot of fun. We did a little Halloween themed um, play with your food kind of thing. I highly recommend this. It's a lot of fun to play with. Um, again, being a makerspace, um, we have access to 3D printing and combining that with food um, in a simple way, um, we you know, kind of made a little mold. Um, and what you're seeing here is a jelly mold inside a jelly mold. Uh, and you shine some UV light on it and you've got um, a hidden message that shows up. And it looks a bit like hope. <laughs> But um, a lot of people read it as nope, which is very telling. It's, I think it, it tells it says more about the observer rather than the artist in this case. But yeah, playing with food, that's the idea. Um, why does it glow? Uh, what's in it that makes it glow? Why does you, we have this kind of thing? Um, uh, those are the sorts of questions and the conversations that come out of it. Um, we also continue the tradition of fermenting uh, various things and then tasting them. Um, so rice is a staple uh, of an Asian culture. So fermenting rice is, is a natural combination. Uh, but I think more um, uh, what dominates our most of our work now is scobies. And so we're um, hosting uh, scobies in the hotel for distinguished microbes. Um, and because of the pandemic, we didn't have access to our own makerspace for a long time. 
which led to some very interesting results. We had our hotel guests that you know grew quite thick. This uh, scoby here we call thick boy. Um, but we've been playing around with scobies in various ways, uh, dehydrating them or uh, you know see bleaching them to see what would happen. Um, and it turns out that they do really well. Uh, very quickly, you can bleach the color out of a scoby and turn it uh, almost transparent, um, which uh, was a sort of accidental discovery, uh, which led to a whole bunch of uh, interesting uh, developments. And one of them here is um, we thought that it would make an, um, uh, uh, an interesting piece of paper. Um, so we grew this, the, the SCOBY in a little box file uh, in the shape of an A4 size sheet of paper, um, which grows really, really well. Uh, and um, once it's dehydrated, um, it has this beautiful sort of stretchy quality to it. Um, and uh, you dehydrate it on a tea towel and very carefully sort of peel it off. It's extremely satisfying to do this if you get it right. It almost has um, a leathery kind of texture to it. And so that led to the discovery of vegan leather and that sort of uh, experimentation. But we stuck with this um, idea and we're now um, exploring the, the paper type of quality of it. It's got some very interesting aesthetic properties. Um, I mean, the water resistance is an issue, but we have somebody who's uh, playing around with combining scogies um, and bioplastics to sort of make them water resistant. Um, but it's very interesting um, as, a, as, as, a, as a parchment. So we're calling this scoby parchment and we've um, actually uh, attracted some interest and so we're making this in larger quantities, uh, again, using very unscientific equipment from the local hardware store or the local stationery store in this case. Um, and uh, just to see what we come up with. Uh, so one of the um, people who uh, expressed an interest is an artist based in Singapore and she works with um, pinhole cameras and the camera obscura idea and she works with kids to interest them in um, this kind of uh, photography and uh, playing with uh, these kinds of devices. And so Isabel is uh, working with, uh, or interested in seeing how the SCOBY parchment can be used in her work. And um, I think there's a room for maybe some kind of cyanotype work where you can put some photography on this um, and see how that turns out. So that's kind of where we are with uh, the SCOBY idea. So um, in summary, ladies and jelly spoons, um, we <laughs> are uh, trying to create a space where it's uh, okay to make and it's okay to fail. It's okay to share. In fact, it helps taking what you've uh, learned from the making and the sharing thing and um, hopefully uh, resulting in something that is edible. Um, and delicious. So we conduct um, sessions where people can learn from each other and learn by experimentation and are not afraid uh, to jump into the science behind what they're working with. Um, I mean, with this whole lockdown situation, there's been a resurgence of sourdough and people making sourdough at home. Um, we sort of started playing with this just before we got thrown into lockdown. Um, but we were looking into uh, why does sourdough have the properties it does? What does it look like uh, under the microscope? And why does it get all stretchy and things like that? So um, hopefully once uh, the restrictions ease up a bit more, uh, we'll be able to open up a little bit and get people to join in person and uh, get their hands dirty and try and taste things um, with other people. So. Um, that's it. That's what we do. And I strongly encourage you to please support this little uh, makerspace that we've got. Uh, we've been struggling in the last 18 months, um, but uh, looking forward, I think um, there are lots of positive things to look forward to. So um, hopefully we'll open strong and uh, bring this work to more people. That's all for me. Thank you. <laughs>